What's up guys, this is Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and I wanted to do a quick voiceover for my newest video, A Moving Moment. It's a uh, wedding video. If you haven't seen the original, please watch that first or else this video will be extremely boring and uh, I'm sure the video quality is going to be really bad as well. Uh, quick background, I've, I've had this idea for a while. Um, I've seen a lot of great wedding videos out there and I've always thought that there was no way that I could actually compete with them. The stuff that Still Motion's doing, um, I really don't understand how they can do that. So uh, over time I figured out a way that I could create something that was cool, that looked really good, but that I thought was actually doable. And it was this concept of shooting everything in extremely slow-mo black and white and really trying to shoot video from the standpoint of a still photographer. So my hope is that you could pause this video at any moment and you'd have a really solid image there. Um, and you know, it, the images are just barely moving to, to give them a little bit of life. And I think I accomplished that. I think it, it worked out pretty well. And I wanted to show you guys uh, how I did it and uh, give you a little bit of insight into uh, filming your own wedding videos because this was my first one and uh, we definitely had to to plan a little bit. So I'll go ahead and play, and uh, I'll just talk as this thing as this thing rolls. Um, what we did was we shot everything at 60 frames per second. We slowed it down to 24 frames per second, and then we used the software called Twixter to slow it down an additional 50%. So I believe everything's playing back around 20% speed. If I could do this again, I might even try to go another half um, slower so it would play back at 10 percent speed um, but I, I think this kinda got the vibe that I was trying to get so real quick um, I just wanted to say the only time that I actually asked the bride and groom to do anything was when she was putting on the lip gloss and then when he was straightening the tie uh, this this moment here is actually real where his best man's helping him out but um, they came and they were all uh, done up already once they got to the church and I kind of wanted to tell the story that you know both of them were each doing the same thing but you know separately so I did ask them to do that but uh, I think everything else from now on is uh, a real moment this shot that we got with the shoes we did something a little bit different um, we filmed this with the Panasonic AF100 that my buddy Mike has and uh, about 10 percent of this video was shot with that camera the rest, 80-90% was shot with the Canon 60D. Um, he used the Cinevate Atlas slider. He pre-focused, slid the camera into uh, focus, and then I have a little LED light that I got off of uh, eBay. And I am moving it around, and you'll notice the everything changing, the lighting change on the shoes. And uh, I kind of like the look of that shot. This again is the AF100, but then we switch here to the 60D. You'll notice um, the lighting looks really nice in this room. Um, and you can actually see the softbox right there. Well, it was right in the upper right-hand corner. I brought in a hot light just to uh, give a little bit, di bit of dimension uh, because if you're trying to shoot black and white and you just have lighting from above, it's probably not going to look very good. So I used the light here where the girls were getting ready, and I also used the light later at the reception. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. See, I love that shot right there. And it looks, I mean, I edited it together like it's all happening at once, but, you know, those three shots of her messing with the dress and then her pulling the veil over, you know, they might have happened 30 minutes apart from each other. I love this shot of the dad. It just it, it's it's an image that, you know, would make the album if you just paused it here. Uh when I went outside, the girls were doing pose pictures uh with Patrick Hall. This was his wedding by the way. I uh I just shot this on a whim very last minute cuz I had this idea. And uh she had a letter and I filmed it and then later I realized he had a letter too. So uh, it worked together that I could kind of show them reading each other's letter at the exact same time. Adds a little bit more to the story. 
And here she is grabbing the flowers. And uh, I did ask her, I just said, hold the flowers in front of you so I could get this shot right here. And then they are now walking to the front of the church. Now at this point, I'm not filming any of this outside. I have my assistant Mike outside, and he is filming all of this stuff on the AF100, um, which he did an awesome job. You'll see a little kid come up and give her a hug. I love that. And uh, at this point, I am inside, seated in the second row, uh, the second pew, and I'm grabbing other shots. So I'm going to show you this shot right here. I knew I wanted reaction shots from the mother, and I wanted reaction shots from the groom. But the thing is, there's only two of us, and Mike's going to be in the back, so he can't get any, any of the reaction shots. So I had to film these shots at different times. So even though I edit it, like she's watching the door being open and her daughter's coming out, she's actually smiling at her other daughter, who's a bridesmaid, walking down the aisle. And uh, you'll notice a lot of these shots look like... I love this, them walking forward. But a lot of these shots, I'll show you this one right here, it's extremely stable. It looks like I'm on a tripod, but I'm actually not. Um, it's the vibration compensation in the 17 to 55 Tamron lens that I'm using. It is the best vibration compensation in any lens that we've ever used. And uh, the lens for still photography is actually terrible. It's, it's a really soft, blurry lens. But for video, it is by far my favorite lens because I can just hold it and it looks like it's on a tripod the entire time. And uh, even when panning here, it's the same lens. Uh, it doesn't jitter or anything. I, I don't know how it works so well. Now, here's the groom looking at his bride coming down the aisle. But I couldn't shoot this, you know, at the right time. So he is actually smiling at his buddy who's walking down the aisle, one of the other groomsmen. But uh, it worked. Here's a shot. Um, this this was actually the first, um, and we have one more shot with a with a Rebel T2i or something um, in the back that that Mike got uh, just to show a little bit of what's going on from a wider perspective. At this point, I put on a 70 to 200 right here, and uh, again, I don't have a tripod, so I'm relying on the I guess Canon calls it image stabilization to keep everything really steady and I love this because she says Charlie that's his name uh, while she's doing the vows so I put that in there and I pan over to her and then hold it just steady enough to get a shot of her putting the ring on and here she goes you know she's looking down at the ring and then she looks up at him I don't think this was actually when she was putting the ring on but it it worked it made sense for the story that she would be looking down and so uh it works now all of a sudden you'll notice boom the footage gets way better looking all of a sudden it's not grainy it's super sharp and the reason for that is um this is uh, like a ten thousand dollar shot right here my buddy mike has the nicest gear on the planet he shot this with a uh, the Panasonic AF100 um, with the 200 millimeter f/2 lens by Canon. I think that's a five or six thousand dollar lens at f/2, and uh, he's shooting at 1080 while I'm shooting everything at 720. So it looks like he's zooming in here, but I actually did that in post, uh, if that makes sense. So I'm just zooming in in Premiere very slowly for a really dramatic kiss. And that is the best shot of the day by far. I love it. I'm so glad he got that. I, I got this shot too, and I thought it was good until I saw this one. Um, all right, so this is the most complicated shot of the day. Um, there's obviously only two of us, but there's three camera angles here. So what we did was we put the Rebel T2i on a tripod and just let it run wide. This shot that you're looking at right here that's paused is uh, Michael's camera zoomed in I told him to get facial reaction shots 
and then I am on a slider with the Tamron 1755, uh, just sliding back and forth, left, right, left, right, left, right. I, I probably went back and forth eight times while I walked down. Um, so you'll see right here. I'm sliding, 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 and then right when I reach the edge, I cut. So while this one's playing, and you'll notice Patrick right here, while this one's playing, I'm resetting the slider. We get one more sh shot up close from Mike. I'm resetting the slider, and then I can restart again from the left to the right, if that makes sense, hopefully. Inside the trolley with the 60D again. That looks really grainy. It was really dark. Um, again, slider with the 60D. Slider with the 60D here. And then again, all of a sudden, the footage gets really good looking all of a sudden. That's because this is Mike's footage with the AF100. Um, and I think he said he was shooting with a .98 f-stop lens. I don't even know what lens it was, but... Uh, He's got them all. So he was able to shoot at much lower ISOs than I was. Dancing shot wide with the 60D. Cake. And here's a happy mistake that happened. You'll notice, right, boom. It, it kind of like fast forwards a little bit. And then again right here, boom. Um, there were so many flashes going off that it was doing really weird stuff to the camera. And so I tried to go in and manually take some frames out that looked really bad. And um, I kind of liked the way it looked. It just kind of gave it this little bit of uh, motion. So I left it in there. Bride singing with the band. More happy dancing. And uh, two more clips. Oh, and just so you guys know... Uh, the same softbox that I used during the uh, getting ready shots with the, with the girls, um, I've set up, and it's obviously camera right here, and that's what's lighting this entire room. If I didn't have that light, um, this video really wouldn't have been possible. I, there was not enough light in the room to shoot any sort of video, and I'm shooting at ISO 6400 there. So this shot... Um, we ran, ran into another problem. We're outside. There's no outlets to plug in the um, the hot light that I have. And we're extremely backlit. You can see all the light hitting the back of their heads. But there's zero light in front of them. So what I did was I used the little LED light panel that I got off eBay. I put it on a light stand and jacked it up really tall behind me and turned it all the way up. And surprisingly, it was plenty bright enough to get this shot. I'll put a link to the uh, LED panel uh, on f-stoppers if you guys want to come check that out. I, it's, if you're doing any video, I suggest buying it. It's awesome. It comes with like gels and everything. It's really, really nice. But um, anyway, that's it. I hope that helps. Um, a lot of the stuff, you know, using Twixter or, you know, the editing techniques, that can be learned very, very easily by just, you know, looking it up on... Uh, YouTube or whatever. If you have any questions, please leave them on this post in F-Stoppers. Don't leave it on YouTube or Vimeo because sometimes I don't see those, but I'll try to answer anybody's questions um, if you post them on F-Stoppers. Thanks so much, guys.